And uh, we all remember that episode where 41 workers were uh, trapped inside a collapsed tunnel in Uttarakashi. And the good news is that they all came out thanks to one of the Australians who was involved in that rescue operation, Professor Arnold Dix. And I'm very happy to say Professor has agreed to talk to us. Uh, welcome, Professor. I have indeed, and I'm delighted to be here at the centre. It's fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, if I can ask you to uh, tell us a bit about your background, I think uh, your name has become household name. Probably everyone knows your background, but let me hear, hear it from you. So I'm that naughty little kid <laughs> that uh, has always been fascinated in nature and all things around. So I ended up studying at university geology and mining geology. Uh, went off and did research as a scientist. Then, uh, as a lawyer, then I became a lawyer, yeah. specialising in technical, scientific, safety sort of law. Uh, and then after I did some work with 9-11, uh, the Twin Towers collapsed, oh, okay. I, uh, I then went out and went, no, I want to look after people's safety and the protection of the environment. And underground's what I do, and I've been doing it the whole of my career. So a rather odd, <laughs> rather uh, unusual career, but one that I just love. And yeah. yeah, and suddenly people know about me. I'm normally a quiet, <laughs> no one knows anything about me kind of guy. Mm. Well, uh, you're a barrister, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's a very unusual mix, uh, engineering, geology and law. It is an unusual mix. I find it a natural mix. Yes. And in fact, at the rescue, it was a terrific mix. Yes. Because what the, the barristers do and what I think decent lawyers do is we're very in touch with what's fair and just and reasonable and we try and help other professionals do their job and here of course in a rescue we had to help the engineers, the, the miners, the, everybody get on and get these, these, these men out and uh, so yeah the lawyer in me was there um, helping everybody, the yeah. geologist, the engineer, the scientist, it was in fact everything I've ever learned in my life in fact I can't think of anything uh, I had to use them all it was the 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 exam of exams the test <laughs> of tests yeah right. yeah uh, how did you get the call to come and uh, help uh, the workers who were trapped to uh, so originally I received a call from the chief engineer from the federal highways agency uh, Rahul Gupta and uh, I I knew of Rahul's work in disasters okay. we'd met uh, earlier in 2023, actually in Spain, oh. and had been discussing the particular difficulties of Himalayan uh, collapses and things. Uh, Rahul, he, he rang me and told me that obviously there was a problem, uh, and he asked me my thoughts and we shared ideas, and over the next few days we were constantly updating each other, or he was explaining what was going on. Uh, and then uh, initial calls, I was in Germany, then I was in Slovenia, and then Rahul introduced me to the secretary to the Prime Minister's office. We had a chat and they said, can you come? Mm. Well, okay. Mm. And so then I went, went right. to site. Okay. Yeah. And uh, of course the process was not very smooth. Uh, the drill broke down uh, in between. We heard about it because we were all uh, very anxiously tuned mm. to the radio and television to see what's happening there. I think probably the whole world. Uh, how did uh, you manage that process which was going a bit astray? I love your choice of language. <laughs> a bit astray, broke down. Everything we were doing, everything was failing. Wow. So the uh, machines that we were using were blowing up, the drills we were using were blowing up, the uh, attachments of things into the ground were ripping out, the tunnel itself was moving, everything we tried wasn't going so well. But I think what was special, and I th even upon reflection I think what was special, was the whole team, and remembering I'm just one, actually there were two Australians there, there's myself and Chris as well, there's a, there's a whole group of us there, there was no, and I don't know how to talk about this, but no horrible personalities, so there was no bully, there was no table banger, there was none of that, so it meant that the finest engineers from the army were sitting with the finest engineers from the Uttrakhand uh, 
civil defence, yeah. sitting with the finest engineers from the Indian coal, um, from the contractor, from, from, from. And we would talk to each other, can I say often at the same time, yeah. which was a new experience for me. Um, the We'd all talk, 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 and then we'd, we'd agree on what we had to do. But what was so special was there wasn't a bully, there wasn't anybody demanding anything. We as experts, as professionals, would work together and work out what to do next. So, so failure, and, and you know, I know you're an engineer as well, mm -hmm. so failure, not yeah, failure's not an option, yeah. and, and failure technically, we would interpret as a new lesson. Mm. Okay, what did we learn? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we had a big list yeah, yeah. <laughs> of what we learned. Yeah. And then, of course, eventually, we decided on the softly, softly, slowly, slowly approach. Yeah. which ultimately worked. Yeah. Uh, we saw some, uh, they hired some of these uh, experts, uh, workers, who were uh, excavating by hand. Yep. Uh, is that a normal thing to do? Uh, it is. Uh, actually, in a mining emergency, mining by hand is normal, okay. just not wi what's widely known. Okay. I think there was a bit of confusion, and I've, I've actually been watching a lot of the discussion and saying uh, this was uh, illegal rat mining blah 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 yeah. no <laughs> for those of you who are watching no 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 that's not what it was at all yeah. the the process of by hand softly mining is a, a well-known process that okay. we use and yeah so the the process of hand excavation is common in an emergency like this okay yeah. Right. Um, what would you say is, uh, was the turning point from an anxious, anxiety-filled uh, process to where you are breathing easy and say, I think we are making progress? I wasn't satisfied, and I'm looking you in the eye when I tell you this. <laughs> it was more than 41 men that I wanted to see. I also wanted to be sure that all my friends from the Uttrakhand Rescue Services were out okay as well. because. You know, I'd made the promise. It was 41 men out and no one hurt. Right. And that meant I meant it. Yeah. So if any of those rescue men had got hurt, I would never have forgiven myself. Yeah. And so I remember I was told the 41 men were out. And then at that point, I came rushing in to my Ultracan friends. Oh. I'm like, is everyone okay? Is everyone here? Is everybody? And they were okay. And then, then and only then was I satisfied. Because for me, in my heart, what what I knew we could do was no injuries, no deaths, yes. uh, uh, which is the miracle. It is a miracle. In fact, we were uh, just watching the whole progress on uh, the TV here, and uh, when those men came out, we were, I don't know, somehow, uh, as if some one of our own family members came out and they were, we were so happy. How elated were you at that point of time? It would be fair to say that there was more than one or two tears yeah. and uh, what I'd done, I'd positioned myself behind the family so I had my, my back up against the wall yeah. and I was watching them and watching the men come out and the first thing that I struck me, which I never even considered, was the look on the family's faces. It was like they were looking at ghosts yeah, I know. because I think for them they must have always been wondering whether the government was telling them the truth, whether we were really going to do this, whether it was some sort of a publicity thing. Yeah, yeah. And there were their kids. Yeah, their children yeah. came out, yeah. their husbands, their uncles there. And they were quiet. They actually weren't yelling and screaming. Everyone else was. Yeah. Like the team of people doing the rescue, they were all jumping around. But the families were quite quiet. Mm -hmm. And and me, I was a bit, bit sniffly, a bit <laughs> quiet in there as well. Yes, yeah. yeah. Well, you said that you have uh, uh, actually been to some of these rescue operations in the past as well. When compared to that, how does this compare compared to all those uh, past rescue operations you have undertaken? There's no comparison. Really? I have never in all my career known a mountain, A, not to kill everybody in the first <laughs> place, B, to keep them warm, C, to allow food and water and air and medicine and then through, to, the pipe. through the little pipe yeah. then to play games with us for a few weeks it's like i felt like we were being teased <laughs> it's like so I, I could almost feel or hear the the mountain laughing at us as we were trying to work out how to get get the men out yeah. and then and then we did it mm. and 
I've never, ever had this happen before, ever. Really? No, okay. not, no, it doesn't happen. Oh. Every, you know, like, I feel like I need to give you a wink and say, <laughs> do you know of this ever happening yeah. in your lifetime? It doesn't happen. Yeah. And yet I felt we could do it. Yeah. Well, uh, just looking at uh, those uh, uh, rescue operations in that, uh, those children who were stuck in a cave in mm. Thailand, mm. and then these workers here, it is a, a victory for humanity, isn't it? It's, I mean, yeah. it brought everyone together. Yeah. Uh, the enemies, friends, everyone was, were praying for yeah. the uh, 41 workers to come out. I think that's one of the huge lessons for the world of 2023, yes. is that the impossible is possible when humanity pulls together. Yeah. And we had good people all around the world their prayers, their thoughts. It was like an interdenominational, yeah. um, or no denomination. It didn't yeah. matter, faith, no faith. That's Just right. send us your kind wishes. Yeah. And they were flowing all around the planet. Everybody was watching live <laughs> on their, yeah. whatever yeah. their news thing. And I think it made a difference. Yeah. And there on site, the feeling, the feeling, this is, I'm a scientist, mm. right? I'm talking feelings. The feeling was, that if we could just concentrate and stay true, we could do this, yes. but we just didn't know how. Yes. And, and, and then we did. Yes. Yeah. Well, we are uh, here celebrating the national days of two great countries, Indeed. two fantastic democracies. Yes. Uh, would you like to send a message to our viewers? Well, wherever you are and whoever you are and whatever faith or whatever, whatever, I'd just like to say, Thank you for your interest in in the rescue and thank you for your kind thoughts because they really do make a difference. And may 2024 be the first of the future years where our civilization, humanity, be nice. Yes. <laughs> Get on and be nice. Uh, of course. Yeah. Of course. So that's what I, I would say. So thank you. Well, sir, I'm very grateful for finding time to talk to us.